My name is Walter Turnbow. I was born in Russellville, Arkansas on May the 26th, 1924. My parents were, was Walter Turnbow and Florence Colburn Turnbow. My father had several farms. He was interested in agriculture and he was sheriff of Pope County at one time and remained in law enforcement for several years. But his big interest was in his, his farming operations. My earliest memories of Springdale were really, uh, it was a little town of 3,000 people. Uh, when I first came here, uh, other fellows by age were getting discharged from the service, made a lot of friends of ex-service people, as well as the ones who went to the university when I did. Uh, I enjoyed going to the Red Pig out on the highway for barbecue. It was the best barbecue restaurant in Northwest Arkansas. And it was just a good, small town, easy to meet people, an enjoyable place to live. In the 1950s, when I first started working at the canning company, we had dry summers, and we had to ration water when it, our sources dried out here. And we definitely needed water to produce canned goods. And that was before we had any chicken processing plants here, and we didn't have any water, enough water to support chicken processing plants. And there was a definite need for water for all of Northwest Arkansas. Now, uh, some people in Fedville felt like they had not enough. They had Lake Fedville and Lake Sequoia supplying their water. But, uh, and Jim Trimble had a dream of doing Beaver Water Lake, and when he was in Congress, he was determined to get this passed. But originally, they did not have a supply of water for the cities in, in the allotment for the lake. And there was a group of men served on a committee for that, and I can't remember who all they were. Well, a shawl was one. But Joe Steele stayed in the background and working with Jim Trimble really pushed to get the water supply for Northwest Arkansas allotment into the legislation. Scheduling shipments of canned goods was my first job. And I gradually went through every department that we had over there. And after Oh, I can't remember how many years. It was close to 30 years I became president. Well, I really liked the stores in Springdale better than I did the big markets today. At Licklider's, Lewis Licklider could order your suits, he'd measure you and you'd get them tailor-made. And that's where I'd buy all my suits. And then Wilson's store, I had our shirts and they never did have my size, but they'd order my suits for me. So I really liked shopping Springdale. Well, Heine's was the best steakhouse in Northwest Arkansas for many years. Heine Derrich uh, started it, and uh, after he after he started it, uh, he might take off two months and go to Germany, and when he'd come back and open up, he wouldn't even have to advertise that he was open again, poured them out, took care of it, and it filled up every night. <laughs> and the Concord Theater was a good country restaurant right downtown that uh, Duja DeWeese owned. And for years, People traveling through Northwest Arkansas would stop there for lunch, just like many people go to Neal's all the time for lunch now. 
where we're sitting now was out in the country. It was it was farmland, and uh, the Emma Avenue wasn't paved past the high school. Uh, Quant Street was really the end of downtown, where uh, 412 is now. Had a great big cedar tree on the corner that got decorated at Christmas time. That was the most decorations around. It was just different. It, it was just a little country town, and uh, people brought produce, beans, strawberries, and trucks on the streets just across the tracks on Emma, and all that area would be just parked full of farm stuff to sell. Uh, the tomatoes, green beans, strawberries in season, and uh, the major businesses, Jeff Brown's company, Tyson's, George's, Steel Canning Company, and Jones Truck Line were all within two blocks on the east side of town. Who are some of the older people you remember when you first came here, and what kind of an impression did they make on you? Oh, I remember Harvey Jones well. Uh, we shipped lots of merchandise through Jones Truck Line, lots of canned goods, so I got pretty well acquainted with him. Uh, Charlie George, John Tyson, I knew John Helen Tyson well and remember when they were were killed in the train wreck up north of town. In fact, I guess I knew, I thought I knew about everybody in town back then. I definitely planned to go to college when I got out of the service, even before anything was done about the GI Bill of Rights. And when I was, my parents weren't living when I was in the service, and I made an allotment of my money, and I, I, I thought I was sending a lot of money to the bank then, I, I sent $50 a month to, to the bank, saving up to go to college. <laughs> I, I guess I was fortunate. I've never missed, I've never drawn a penny of unemployment. I've, all, I've had a job, well, fact the business. My parents died when I was young, and I really started working when I was 15. Work after school on the weekends and on the, in the summers. Well, uh, I was appointed to, uh, well, Harvey Jones uh, retired and before his term was up and the board appointed me to the position that he, he ha held and then I ran for it when the election came up and and was elected then and then for another term. Now, school, the school system back then was focused on the middle learners. The low learners and the high learners did not get the attention that I thought they should get. And I worked on, on that primarily. I wanted them taken care of. I wanted the high achievers to be challenged. And I wanted the low achievers to be brought along as much as they could be. Well, I think the, the most disturbed that I, that I got, we had an English teacher at school who had been a been in a whack, and she was an excellent teacher, and she walked the room and lectured and carried a glass of water in her hand. And one day she was lecturing, 
and she had a boy in her class who'd gone to sleep, and she just passed by him, lectured, and dumped this glass of water on his head. His parents got up at arms about that, which I thought was disgraceful. If it had been my daughter that had gone to sleep in her class, I would have thanked her. <laughs> but I didn't always see eye to eye on, on complaints of parents. So what happened on the water story? What well, how that end up? Well, they reprimanded the teacher, which I thought was a mistake. Now, on, on the State Board of Education, I worked for 17 years to get a regulation passed that a student could not participate in athletics unless they had a C average in their grades. Well, I started on that when I first went on, and I couldn't, I couldn't get agreement. I'd, I'd work the other board members on the side to see if I could get a good agreement to get it passed, and I couldn't. I kept working, working them every year, and we finally got, got the board where I got it passed, and unfortunately, I had coaches over the state and superintendents over the state that were just real unhappy with me. But I was tired of kids getting out of school who couldn't read. I'd say it's extremely important because there are not many athletes who are gonna make the pros and make big money or make money at all. And they have to have, the, they need the knowledge through high school to get a job and to be productive. I didn't ask to be on the State Board of Education. Uh, I got back from Chicago to, at my brother's funeral and I was reading the paper the next morning that I'd been appointed to the State Board of Education. And so I called I call David Pryor's office. And Amy, I can't remember her last name now. Anyhow, woman who handles the bookwork on all these. And I asked her why I had been appointed. Well, she said you'd been on the school board up here and that Lee Zachary and Sandy Boone had recommended you. And I said, well, no one called me. I don't know what the responsibilities are and how much time it takes. And until I get more information about it, I can't tell you whether I'm gonna serve or not. So they got a lot of information to me and I finally agreed to serve. While we were in the university, we played bridge all uh, at the end of the month. We, we'd really go someplace and do something, spend all of our money the first part of the month, then we'd be broke and have to play bridge the rest of the month. Now, after I got married, we had a club here that was started right after World War II, couple club that had about 10 couples in it that were real close friends. We met at each other's home every other Saturday night and had a corporative dinner, or we might decide we were going to Tulsa on that Saturday night, or we might be going to Hot Springs to the races, or around New Year's, have a New Year's dance. But we stayed together for over 40 years. I got here the second year of the Rodeo of the Ozarks. I got roped in on, on uh, working the rodeo for several years. And when my kids were little, I'd always take them to the rodeo. We sold tickets in advance, and we had people taking those tickets. People would come who had bought tickets in advance, and you had to have someone there to sell them. I went to school in Bentonville uh, after my father died. Uh, I 
my sister and brother-in-law were in Bentonville, and I went up and lived with them and went to high school and my, started my sophomore year up there. My parents weren't living. My brother was still in the South Pacific when I came home in 1945, and my brother-in-law and sister had moved to Springdale from Bentonville, and that was home to me. If somebody who'd never been to Springdale ever asked you to tell them what kind of a town Springdale is, what would you tell them? I'd tell them it was a good business town. It had a lot of well-educated people in it who were friendly and welcomed newcomers. 